Hello everybody, Peter Strada here at the Toronto International Film Festival, and Jermaine has traveled just to see one movie. Just for one movie we've traveled. Um, and I'm also here with Alex Bellington from FirstShowing.net. What's up guys? Um, we just saw Brian Johnson's Looper, which is about what? Well, you guys, have seen the, you guys have probably seen the trailers and stuff. Time travel has been invented 30 years in the future, and but it's illegal, so uh, the mob or the organized crime sends back their, uh, you know, bad guys to kill, to be killed by these special assassins called loopers. And Ryan uh, Johnson is the writer-director, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Bruce Willis of the stars. And um, uh, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to give away more than that, huh? No, I mean, you see in the trailers. You no, I know. It. And a lot of people are, are just trying not to know anything about it, yeah. which is a really good idea going in, because there's so much, like, it has such a world to get into. Like, it has a future sci-fi world that, once you're into it, you it's like you're into it, and you. I don't know. I love what I love that world he created. The, uh, sorry, this is a Ryan Johnson film, by the way, of Brick yeah. and the Brothers Bloom. Previously, this is his third yeah, feature I, film. You know, you know the one thing I want to say is uh, Brick blew me away when I first saw it. It was one of those films that was just like so different uh, than anything I had seen before. Although it's very the same as you know whatever, um, but it was just so unique. And uh, when Brothers when I first saw Brothers Bloom at the uh, Toronto Film Festival, yeah. I think. Um, I came out a little disappointed because it was more traditional than I expected from a, a Ryan Johnson film. And uh, o over time, I, I've seen the movie five times, and I've grown to love it. I love the score. Uh, it grew on me quite a bit. But uh, Looper, to me, is the film I expected from the second film from Ryan Johnson. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, this, this in is a more, good way or a bad way? In a, in a good, good way. In a good okay. way. Okay. Because yeah. I, no, I was gonna, one of the things I've noticed with Ryan Johnson, too, is I love all his films, but it, they grow on me. Like, I, the first time I see them, I'm like, eh, this time, not the case. This time, I was like, I knew what I was into it. Maybe it's partial, because I'm partial to sci-fi, and I knew that, like, I'm going to love, yeah. as long as he nails the sci-fi elements, which he does, and I'm going to love it, and I did. But it's, I also think it will grow on me even more, honestly. And that, what I feel like is that he's matured each and every film and that he's now at a point where he has a grasp of the world and now he's starting to focus on the characters and story more and more and more. Not that he didn't have that with yeah. Brick and Brothers Bloom, but he's like really honing it in this yeah. time, I think. What I, what I love about Looper is that it's, you've seen all the sci-fi elements, it's got great sci-fi, it's got a great world, it's got a great conceptualization of the world and of time travel, but it really, what you don't know is that it tells a much more heartfelt, interesting story. I mean, it's very much, uh, you know, we obviously don't, I'm not going to say anything more than that. But um, yeah, it is just, it is just, yeah, no, no, not of, of course not. But he just, he uses the sci-fi in service of something so much bigger and so much more meaningful. And that really, really drives it home, I think. Uh, and the action and everything like that are used in service of that specifically and are peppered in um, when, when they need to be and to great effect. Yeah, no, I, I would say... Um one of the things that impressed me the most is, is how lean the script is. Every single bit of payoff is paid off, and like in multiple ways. And uh, for a time travel movie, I'm you know Back to the Future is my favorite movie of all time. There's some stuff that he played with with time travel here that I've never seen in any other time travel movie before. And some of it's psychological, and what would you do in in this kind of scenario? And some of it's like. Uh, you know, I don't even want to ruin yeah, it, just say but that. it's it, it, yeah. some some really cool cool moments. He balances to me, Ryan Johnson with this film balances the like cool time travel sci-fi stuff that you're like, oh, that's so cool to yeah. see, and the intrigue of the story. Like, no matter what, constantly through the entire movie, you're going to be like, what's happening next? What's going to happen? Even yeah. when they like tell you a hint in dialogue, it still doesn't necessarily lead to where you think it's going to lead, and you're still constantly like, and it's not confusing. It's just that perfect balance of cool shit, yet also intriguing story, yet also interesting characters, yet also just yeah. constantly wanting to find out what's going to happen next, what's going to go on. I don't know. I just love that. He had, he nailed that balance a lot. I, I, will, say, I will say I felt like um, while every scene, you're, you're, Pete's absolutely right, the script is very, very taut, it did leave me a couple times wondering, well, what is he doing with this? Where it just slows down to a crawl, and you're like, what's happening here? And then it's just character stuff, and he's really yeah. just making everything that happens later pay off more. Yeah. It, does, it hurts the pacing this, this much. Um, also, that, that, that's the only thing. I think some people are going to be going into this expecting 
an action movie, and this isn't necessarily really an action movie at all. No, it's not. It's not. Like I said, it's more of a it's more of a drama with sci fi action elements. I was gonna say it's like it's like how people thought uh, they would get Fast and the Furious out of Drive and what Drive really is, yeah. which is a thousand times better than Fast and the Furious. This is yeah. same thing, I guess, for you know some other big studio trying. It's like this is the it's it is a studio, but it's also a lot more refined. Like his budget is not even close to a studio yeah. budget. I think it's sixty million. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to say is there's so many great shots in this movie. I, I want to see it again. And there's just so many uh, beautifully framed and executed uh, moments um, in, in this film. And I don't want to give any of them away. Some of them were in the trailers. Um, but it, 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 it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. I, I had something I want to say and I totally forgot it. I, I hate that. Well, I want to say something but it's not spoiler. It's too spoiler. But I just want to say that it's just, it just, it leaves, it, the film has left the kind of impact on me that, that I feel like could also have the impact on other people where it's like, it makes you think about your life. Makes you think about your decisions and your choices, in the sense of yeah. of here's time travel within the mix of it, yeah. but also just just thinking about that. It's and I think also that's, that's what I wanted to say is that what's also cool about it is it does make you feel like it, it makes you think about your life and everything, but it also does it's going to inspire some debate about some of the plot points and some of what happens. It's yeah. pretty tight. Which we really can't get into. No, it of course we're not going to get into. It's it's pretty tight, but there are some things some uh, things that Johnson does that you're like. Wait, what, why did he do that? And I, I really can't wait to see it again to sort of think about it, sort of knowing where everything goes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, and it's great that it's a time travel movie, but you, you know, you don't have all these confusing diagrams of how time travel works. It makes fun of that. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> but they, 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 it's very lean in that sense. And um, I, I just wanted to point out uh, the work of Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who has a great performance in this movie. Um, you know, it, it's weird because in the trailers, you can kind of see the makeup and the performance. But you, you don't see it as much as like when you see a full scene. I felt like I felt like when we first saw the pictures of uh, Gordon Levitt in the Bruce Willis makeup, I guess we call it uh, at WonderCon. It was like, whoa, he really is made up. It, it just he melts into it here. Yeah. Like it doesn't even seem like he has any makeup. Just a little bit in the nose, and you can tell he got his voice a little bit down to sort of be Bruce Willis, and it totally works. And like there's other characters in the movie that have their older self yeah. uh, because of time travel. And, it, it, and you it's, know what? It's, it's I've been similar. watching a lot of the newsroom. I'm not sure if you guys yeah, have been sure. watching the newsroom and watching uh, Daniels in this. It's just like it's night and day. His his uh, he's, he's a great yeah. actor. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's an amazing he's actor. Awesome. Yeah, he's got a small uh, but short sweet role in this. And uh, yeah. it, and there's a lot of people like that. I mean, like Garrett Hedlund, not Garrett Hedlund, Dilla Hunt shows up yeah, in yeah. a small little role. Oh, yeah. uh, not Garrett Hedlund. That'd be funny. Yeah, yeah. Tron Legacy yeah. drops yeah, in. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 simultaneously everything you want it to be, but not what you expect. And what else do you want in a movie when it comes to that, right? You remind me, the last thing I want to mention now is, is Nathan Johnson's score, yes. which is, uh, I think it's Ryan Johnson's cousin. And he's done all the music for all of his films, and he made this sort of off his own ambient sounds. There's been featurettes we've all posted about how they've made it, and listening to it, I think it sort of, it elevates the film from just being a film to the, like, true project it really makes it stand out. Like, not yeah. only here's everything Ryan Johnson did, but then bringing it together, like the final product yeah, yeah, yeah. is holy crap. This is everything it, about it is unique and original, even down to the score. And it's very, it's very, very yeah. different than the Brothers Bloom score, which is like piano and orchestra. It, it, yeah, like really moody and really yeah. Trent Reznor y. You know. Okay, anyways, <laughs> we can find more of your work at firstshowing.net and at firstshowing. I'm going back to LA. Uh, Toronto was great for a couple of minutes. It looks very see beautiful see for you, Sunny. Man. So uh, it, thanks it, a lot. It looks kind of like California. It does a little bit. <laughs> All right, uh, anyway, slashfilm.com. We'll, we'll see you later.